Chapter 1 of the ABC of Adams. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The ABC of Adams by Bertrand Russell. Chapter 1. Introductory. To the eye or to the touch, ordinary matter appears to be continuous. Our dinner table, or the chairs on which we sit, seem to present an unbroken surface. We think that if there were too many holes, the chairs would not be safe to sit on. Science, however, compels us to accept a quite different conception of what we are pleased to call solid matter. It is, in fact, something much more like the Irishman's definition of a net, a number of holes tied together with pieces of string. Only it would be necessary to imagine the strings cut away until only the knots were left. When science seeks to find the units of which matter is composed, it is led to continually smaller particles. The largest unit is the molecule, but a molecule is, as a rule, composed of atoms of several different elements. For example, a molecule of water consists of two atoms of hydrogen and one of oxygen, which can be separated from each other by chemical methods. An atom in its turn is found to be a sort of solar system, with a sun and planets. The empty regions between the sun and the planets fill up vastly more space than they do, so that much the greater part of the volume that seems to us to be filled with a solid body is really unoccupied. In the solar system that constitutes an atom, the planets are called electrons and the sun is called the nucleus. The nucleus itself is not simple except in the case of hydrogen. In all other cases, it is a complicated system consisting, in all likelihood, of electrons and hydrogen nuclei, or protons as they are also called. With electrons and hydrogen nuclei, so far as our present knowledge extends, the possibility of dividing up matter into bits comes to an end. No reason exists for supposing that these themselves have a structure and are composed of still smaller bits. We do not know, of course, that reasons may not be found later for subdividing electrons and hydrogen nuclei. We only know that so far nothing prevents us from treating them as ultimate. It is difficult to know whether to be more astonished at the smallness of these units, or at the fact that there are units, since we might have expected matter to be divisible ad infinitum. It will help us to picture the world of atoms if we have, to begin with, some idea of the size of these units. Let us start with a gram of hydrogen. Footnote. A gram is about one four hundred and fifty third of a pound. End footnote. Which is not a very large quantity. How many atoms will it contain? If the atoms were made up into bundles of a million million, and then we took a million million of these bundles, we should have about a gram and a half of hydrogen. That is to say, the weight of one atom of hydrogen is about a million millionth of a million millionth of a gram and a half. Other atoms weigh more than the atom of hydrogen, but not alarmously more. An atom of oxygen weighs 16 times as much, an atom of lead rather more than 200 times as much. Per contra, an electron weighs very much less than a hydrogen atom. It takes about 1,850 electrons to weigh as much as one hydrogen atom. The space occupied by an atom is equally minute. As we shall see, an atom of a given kind is not always of the same size. When it is not crowded, the electrons which constitute its planets sometimes are much farther from its sun than they are under normal terrestrial conditions. But, under normal conditions, the diameter of a hydrogen atom is about a hundred millionth of a centimeter. A centimeter is about a third of an inch. That is to say, this is about twice the usual distance of its one electron from the nucleus. The nucleus and the electron themselves are very much smaller than the whole atom, just as the sun and the planets are smaller than the whole region occupied by the solar system. The size of the electron and the nucleus are not accurately known, but they are supposed to be about a hundred thousand times as small as the whole atom. It might be thought that not much could be known about such minute phenomena, since they are very far below what can be seen by the most powerful microscope. But in fact, a great deal is known. What has been discovered about atoms by modern physicists is doubly amazing. In the first place, it is contrary to what every man of science expected, and in part very difficult to reconcile with the other knowledge and with deep-seated prejudices. In the second place, it seems to the layman hardly credible that such very small things should be not only observable, but measurable with a high degree of accuracy. Sherlock Holmes, at his best, did not show anything like the skill of the physicists in making inferences, subsequently verified, from minute facts which ordinary people would have thought unimportant. It is remarkable that, like Einstein's theory of gravitation, a great deal of the work on the structure of the atom was done during the war. It is probable that it will ultimately be used for making more deadly explosives and projectiles than any yet invented. The study of the way in which atoms combine into molecules belongs to chemistry and will not much concern us. We are concerned with the structure of the atoms, the way in which electrons and nuclei come together to build up the various kinds of atoms. This study belongs to physics almost entirely. There are three methods by which most of our knowledge is obtained, the spectroscope, x-rays, and radioactivity. 
The hydrogen atom, which has a simple nucleus and only one electron, is studied by means of the spectroscope almost alone. This is the easiest case, and the only one in which the mathematical difficulties can be solved completely. It is the case by means of which the most important principles were discovered and accurately tested. All the atoms except that of hydrogen present some problems which are too difficult for the mathematicians, in spite of the fact that they are largely of a kind that has been studied ever since the time of Newton. But although exact quantitative solutions of the questions that arise are often impossible, it is not impossible, even with the more complex atoms, to discover the sort of thing that is happening when they emit light or x-rays or radioactivity. When an atom has many electrons, it seems that they are arranged in successive rings round the nucleus, all revolving round it approximately in circles or ellipses. An ellipse is an oval curve, which may be described as a flattened-out circle. The chemical properties of the atom depend almost entirely upon the outer ring, so does the light that it emits, which is studied by the spectroscope. The inner rings of electrons give rise to x-rays when they are disturbed, and it is chiefly by means of x-rays that their constitution is studied. The nucleus itself is the source of radioactivity. In radium and the other radioactive elements, the nucleus is unstable, and is apt to shoot out little particles with incredible velocity. As the nucleus is what really determines what sort of atom is concerned, i.e. what element the atom belongs to, an atom which has ejected particles in radioactivity has changed its chemical nature, and is no longer the same element as it was before. Radioactivity has only been found among the heaviest atoms, which have the most complex structure. The fact that it occurs is one of the proofs that the nucleus of such elements has a structure and is complex. Until radioactivity was discovered, no process was known which changed one element into another. Nowadays, transmutation, the dream of the alchemists, takes place in laboratories. But, unfortunately, it does not transform the baser metals into gold. It transforms radium, which is infinitely more valuable than gold, into lead of a sort. The simplest atom is that of hydrogen, which has a simple nucleus and a single electron. Even the one electron is lost when the atom is positively electrified. A positively electrified hydrogen atom consists of a hydrogen nucleus alone. The most complex atom known is that of uranium, which has, in its normal state, 92 electrons revolving around the nucleus, while the nucleus itself probably consists of 238 hydrogen nuclei and 146 electrons. No reason is known why there should not be still more complex atoms, and possibly such atoms may be discovered some day. But all the most complex atoms known are breaking down into simpler ones by radioactivity, so that one may guess that still more complex atoms could not be stable enough to exist in discoverable quantities. The amount of energy packed up in an atom is amazing, considering its minuteness. There is least energy in the outer electrons, which are concerned in chemical processes, and yield, for instance, the energy derived from combustion. There is more in the inner electrons, which yield x-rays, but there is the most in the nucleus itself. This energy in the nucleus only came to be known through radioactivity. It is the energy which is used up in the performances of radium. The nucleus of any atom except hydrogen is a tight little system, which may be compared to a family of energetic people engaged in a perpetual family quarrel. In radioactivity, some members of the family emigrate, and it is found that the energy they used to spend on quarrels at home is sufficient to govern an empire. If the source of this energy can be utilized commercially, it will probably in time supersede every other. Rutherford, to whom more than any other single man is due the conception of the atom as a solar system of electrons revolving around a nucleus, is working on this subject, and investigating experimental methods of breaking up complex atoms into two or more simpler ones. This happens naturally in radioactivity, but only a few elements are radioactive, at any rate to an extent that we can discover. To establish the modern theory of the structure of nuclei on a firm basis, it is necessary to show, by artificial methods, that atoms which are not naturally radioactive can also be split up. For this purpose, Rutherford has subjected nitrogen atoms and others to a severe bombardment and has succeeded in detaching hydrogen atoms from them. This whole investigation is as yet in its infancy. The outcome may in time revolutionize industry, but at present this is no more than a speculative possibility. One of the most astonishing things about the processes that take place in atoms is that they seem to be liable to sudden discontinuities, sudden jumps from one state of continuous motion to another. The motion of an electron round its nucleus seems to be like that of a flea, which crawls for a while and then hops. The crawls proceed accurately according to the old laws of dynamics, but the hops are a new phenomenon, concerning which certain totally new laws have been discovered empirically, without any possibility,
so far as can be seen, of connecting them with the old laws. There is a possibility that the old laws, which represent in motion as a smooth continuous process, may be only statistical averages, and that, when we come down to a sufficiently minute scale, everything really proceeds by jumps, like the cinema, which produces a misleading appearance of continuous motion by means of a succession of separate pictures. In the following chapters, I shall try to explain in non-technical language what is known about the structure of atoms and how it has been discovered, in so far as this is possible without introducing any mathematical or other difficulties. Although a great deal is known, a great deal more is still unknown. At any moment, important new knowledge may be discovered. The subject is almost as interesting through the possibilities which it suggests as through what has actually been ascertained already. It is impossible to exaggerate the revolutionary effect which it may have both in the practice of industry and in the theory of physics. End of chapter 1